Hello, I'm Reed from the Codex team and I'm very excited about this video because I'm going to answer a question which I get asked a lot of times by beginning users of Codex, which is, well, how do you set up your perfect project structure? How do you go about modeling your game design documents, your work tasks inside of Codex? And I think there are a lot of ways of doing that. You can use DAX, you can use tags and so on, but there's one specific way which I feel is really special inside of Codex and where all the features work in unison. And I think it's a really interesting novel approach to solving this problem of planning a game, um, structuring your work for a game. So I'm going to show you that based on a real world example because you're getting the insider's view. I'm going to show you our actual production decks that we are using for creating our game the cards that we look at every day. So as you might know, I'm also the founder of Machine Mensch, which is a indie games company based here in Berlin. We have around 10 people working in-house and are collaborating with several freelancers on our game Cures Expedition 2, which is the sequel to our debut title. Cures Expedition 2 is a roguelike expedition simulator where you explore uncharted islands. And I'm going to explain to you the structure which I'm really excited about, which is called or I like to call it the hero's journey. And um, yeah, I think you, you might like it. So <laughs> let's get started. The first thing you will notice, I'm looking here at the DAX view of our uh, project. The first thing you might notice is when I open the mission control to show you the, all the projects that we're maintaining. I've highlighted here all the projects belonging to QS Expedition 2. The first thing you will notice is that there are several projects for this one game. So this is maybe the first takeaway for you. You can use multiple projects to model one game inside of Codex. You don't need to do that. It's just a convenient way for splitting up decks into separate chunks and sharing those easily with different people. For example, freelancers or your core team. Two projects of these will be especially relevant and I will talk about. They are the production project and the game design documents project. So. Let's look at the production project. You can see it here. The idea of the decks inside of the production project is that they are built around work areas or disciplines, basically. So for example, we have one deck here called code work, which contains all kinds of programming related tasks. We have writing work for narrative work for the game. We have here animation work, UI work, script and tuning work when people use our internal scripting engine to accomplish something. All of these decks are built around the idea of a specific work area that somebody might be working in. And this is in contrast to the game design documents project, which contains decks built around the idea of player facing content of the game. So this will be different for any game. For our game, you explore islands. So we have a deck for different island ideas. We have a deck for item ideas, location ideas, and so on. Let's explore one of these location ideas. This contains all kinds of random ideas for locations that we want to add to the game. Some of them we might never add. Some of them, them we will add. They're all in here. Some of them are very <laughs> loosely defined. Some of them are super intricate and contain complex documents. For example, here's the dark pit. You can see this is pretty much a there's not a lot of detail here. It's just like a more like a scribble or like a quick note that somebody jotted down to keep this uh, idea around. Some of them are a bit more complex. In general, for us, we like to keep it, the game design documents pretty minimal. But that's up to your team. They can also have attachments like this one, for example, for a visualization of the idea. The important question now is, so we have these game design cards, which represent all kinds of abstract ideas. And we have these decks that represent concrete work tasks. How do we go about splitting up these abstract game design ideas into concrete work tasks? In Codex, you use the journeys for that. A journey is a template that you can assign to a deck, which represents the perfect pipeline to implement that piece of content in the game. So. Let's check out the location ideas pipeline or journey. 
you can see it contains several cards that in our experience are needed to accomplish the goal of adding this content type. So for the occasions, it usually for us starts with our game designer creating a design brief about the general idea. Then a gameplay prototype is created. Then the game designer creates a art brief about what should be the visual identity of this location in terms of corresponding to its gameplay. Then our art, our art director creates a art brief. The artist creates the art. It goes into Unity at some point uh, through a prefab and so on. Several steps are here involved. There might even be a music track. And now the nice thing about this, this is that the question of, how, well, how do you get one piece of location into the game becomes really easy. It's just a click. So for example, I might have here this location to create all the sub steps that I showed you before. I just have to click on the start journey button and it will turn it into a hero card. That's a card that can contain several sub steps. I'm not going to do that now because this is our actual production deck, as I said, but let's look at a hero card that was created before. I can look at the sub cards and I will see it's looking good. A lot of these sub cards have been created. Um, and I can look at this progress bar here. I can get a, an idea of how much work is remaining because these uh, progress steps are scaled by the effort. And I can see at one glance how far advanced this thing is. That's pretty powerful, especially when you combine it with this other idea of customizing the individual subcards. So each of these subcards, which I define here, I can edit any property of them and give them different default values. The most obvious one would be assigning it to a specific person already. But it can also be effort. For example, if you're also using time tracking, you might have realized that creating a texture for weapon takes you two points of effort. You can already assign that. You can also assign tags. What's really special is that you can assign a target deck in which this card should be created. So if you don't do that, by default, the subcards will be created in the same location as the hero card. So in this case, it would be inside of location ideas. But what I can also do is I can take the code related card belonging to this pipeline and already assign it to the code work deck that I showed you before. And I can assign the animation uh, task to the animation deck. And that, what that gives us is a really cool reachability of cards for people that are interested in a specific work area. So for example, our programmer, if he's interested in code related tasks for the day, he's planning his milestone, for example, all he needs to do to find all the code related tasks where his support is needed, he can go into the code work deck and find the cards there without even having to know where they originate from. So there could be like a code piece needed for a code support needed for an enemy, for an item, for a weapon. It doesn't matter. They will all be collected in this deck where they are really easy to, to find and to prioritize. So this gives a really good readability or visibility. What's nice since they are belonging to a, to a hero card, so they kind of they keep in mind the context to which they belong. So for example, here we needed support for a special custom effect on an item. So I have this code task here. I can look at that, but I can also, if I want to know more about the general context, I can just click on this hero card and get the hero card that corresponds to the original game design concept that this code task was needed for. This gives us the best of both worlds because as a programmer or animator or artist, I can go into my department specific deck to find all the cards from the whole project that need my support. But if I'm a game designer or a producer or a marketeer, I can go into the GDD and see, for example, the state of all the locations in the game. And I can just hover over them and see the remaining required work independent of whether it's a code task or a uh, art task or anything. 
And this helps really with building kind of a shared sense of uh, accomplishment and um, cause. Because you, you will understand that if you're programming something or creating an animation in isolation, this is not what your actual work is. <laughs> your actual work is creating a piece of content in the game that a player or a play tester can interact with. And that's the important thing. And using these hero cards helps keeping that in context. So that's all I have. Um, so this gives a so the recap what the hero's journey is. I would recommend to you, if you want to use the hero's journey, to set up game design decks built around the idea of player-facing content. So what are the categories for those decks from a player's perspective? Then inside of those decks, you will collect cards which are variations of this idea. And then you will set up a journey on the deck which can be applied to any of those variations to with one click trigger the perfect pipeline for this asset type. And then for extra points, if you then put those extra, the, these subcards into work area related decks, then you get a really strong and powerful workflow, which I've never seen in any other tool. So I hope you found this instructive or inspiring. There are a lot of different ways for setting up a project. Uh, the tool is quite flexible. Um, so I'm eager to learn what you're doing. Um, let me know if you're using a variation of this or a completely different set, uh, setup. If you're framing your game design documents or your work task around other concepts. Um, but in any way, I would recommend try this way because it works really well for us and it's quite powerful. All right, see you in the next one.